Denny Hamlin wins a rather chaotic Bristol race. We are back on the concrete and it's Ben and I live from Bristol following the race, telling you all about it. Let's get to it. Hey everyone, it's Taylor Kitchen with Ben Branscombe and we are at Bristol Motor Speedway on a Sunday night. So glad to see you all tuning into this really odd edition of Above the Yellow Line, but a great one nonetheless. And in case you're new here, Above the Yellow Line is Motorsports Media your way, talking about NASCAR literally all the time. You're going to hear some horns in the background, etc. Um, some people maybe honking their horns for traffic, maybe others about Denny Hamlin, who won this race, but the key of this race, Ben, was tires. Like, mm -hmm. insane. I mean, and even to the stages of the race, everything was so different. Uh, just We were all in different places at the track. I was I had the privilege of going to the PRN booth today, seeing the track from a high view. So shout out to Doug Rice and the whole PRN team for having me there, seeing how it's done. I'll probably do a separate video on that. But Ben, initial reactions to Bristol. Concrete Bristol is back <laughs> and in a wacky and wild way. Truly from the stands, this race was chaos from the get-go the first stage was just bonkers i was standing up in my seat wondering what was going on because you would listen to the broadcast and one call would be for another thing another call would immediately follow for another thing uh slow lap times at bristol was something i never expected to see in my entire life we were running almost 18 second laps which is insane i think the biggest takeaway was the veterans showed up the veterans showed up big time denny hammond obviously winning martin trix jr second Brad Kozlowski, that's your top three. The veteran guys know what they're doing. They still are able to conserve tires, which that was a big part of it. It was just tire conservation. That first stage, though, bonkers. No one was – and even, like I told you, during the first stage, I was watching and I saw Truex work his way up to the field, and I thought, okay, this is going to be a veteran-led race. This is going to be a big thing of it. It's just veterans saving tires, knowing what's going on with this race. We saw it constantly. Even Ty Gibbs, who was – killer and that's the one thing i get to is toyota's but ty gibbs was killing this race but it burned him in the long run christopher bell still a younger guy tower conservation burned him in the long run so definitely a wacky return to the concrete but i honestly think race of the year so far i like it's up there for me i mean nascar fans have been very spoiled this year and something that i keyed in on after the race that denny hamlin said in his post-race interview on fox was it felt like an old school short track feel like south boston something mm -hmm. like that which i thought was really unique and with the tire fall off there wasn't a lot that was laid down on the track, which kind of perplexed a lot of people, but mm -hmm. it kept things really interesting on the track. We had a lot of marbling on the track that was a little slippery for these tires, for these drivers. So, I don't know. It was it was wild and really, really fun. Definitely a wild race. Josh Berry showing up strong. The short track vibes, the short track energy, short track feel came back again, which is incredible. Uh, definitely a weird race with tire conservation. I know these were the same tires, tire compound, excuse me, that they brought last fall. So I would chalk it up to maybe just a little bit of weird stuff with the resin. I know mm -hmm. during the PRN broadcast, they were talking about Kyle Larson telling Cliff Daniels saying, we need to red flag this and spray more PJ1 down. To which I say, your racers, fight the environment. This, mm -hmm. is, this, is what you, this is what everyone, this is what I thought during the race too. This is what everyone's paid to do at the end of the day. They're paid to be at their best. There's fireworks going off in the distance. That's interesting. Hey. Uh, they're paid to be their best at all times. And crew chiefs had to think strategy out. Tire like crew changers and tire members had to be on their game. Like this is what it is. Drivers had to be on their game too. This is just what it is at the end of the day. You know, they had to be on their game at their best. So. Yeah, and what was crazy about this race too was you saw guys just drop like flies, like at an instance. Like there was never anything like there was no notification that any driver was just gonna fall off but then you saw like blaney drop like a rock cindric drop like a rock even too chase elliott there were so many cautions and weird cautions today as well that just happened out of nowhere so i don't know i was very happy that denny hamlin won this race like you said it was a race for veterans and it really showed at the end of the day and going back to stage one nobody knew what we were dealing with right because practice to qualifying things changed so drastically so and if you saw people that were practicing in group a and they were qualifying they didn't have the right set up at all so it kind wow. of made for an interesting situation but also i did want to mention too like brad kislowski we thought that rfk could have a very decent day as we're talking to you all right now we don't really know outside of the top 10 results but brad kislowski with a top five finish that is a result that he yeah. needed alex bowman with a top five finish as well which he's had yeah. a rough season somebody who continues to have a rough season though is joey logano and i'm getting very concerned for that team austin cindric again having a little bit of a difficult race and ryan blaney of course with a penalty late on mm -hmm. wasn't really able to recover from that well so I don't know. I mean, for me right now, the concern team is Penske, but Stuart Haas Racing, again, we kind of doubted them going into the season. We thought all of the rhetoric of 
SHR is back, which is kind of not there, but they're showing up regardless mm -hmm. of who it is. I still think that Grayson and Briscoe are probably the strongest there, but jo Josh Berry today though, showing he has what it takes. And I'm really excited to see how he does at Richmond in two weeks. Yeah. And then Martinsville, if this is a short track package that SHR is bringing. Yeah, I mean, short track guy, car store legend, arguably, Josh Berry came out swinging. I want to flip the coin a little bit from Penske, I want to talk about Toyota as a whole. Yes. Killer day. All four Gibbs cars were the top four for several moments, swapping the roll back and forth of lead. You had a great showing from both the Legacy Motor Club cars. Yeah, how about uh, that? Yeah. Josh Arnimacek towards the front practically yeah. all day. Eric I mean, Jones, the second half. Eric Jones fought back from a little bit of adversity overall, but was having a solid run. You know, Toyota really showed up and showed off today, I feel like. It was a very dominant race. And also just... A big deal for them. Toyota showed up. Chevy was kind of there, but not really. They showed up at late with Bo or with Bowman, excuse me. Larson was in the top five, top ten. And he most came of the back day. from adversity as well. Yeah, came so. back from that penalty that happened uh, at the end at the last caution. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ford really felt like they were out to lunch today in a big way. McDowell was solid. Got caught up in some stuff. The Penske team, though. Uh, if I'm Penske, I'm kind of starting to sweat a little. Yeah. That was a pretty tough race to kind of swallow as a whole. So. Mm -hmm. oh, a fantastic Bristol race. This for me personally was my first time at this track. And I will tell you, if you've, if you've never been here, they really call it the world's fastest half mile for a reason. Like when you're in the stand, your feet rumble and you get that at other tracks, but not like this. You are surrounded by sound. It is one of the loudest tracks I've been to. And even though at the end of the day, like in stage three, everyone figured it out. We were kind of train racing in a sense. We were bumper to bumper, really nothing happening. No multiple grooves. We we're all just kind of cruising along. It was still absolutely thrilling. The spring race, I was a little disappointed. I didn't feel like the attendance was where I thought it would be. And not to draw attention to that. I know some people say you're drawing attention because the negativity wanting to cause. No, it's more so that's what I observed. Um, but that's to say, spring next year, y'all better show up. And that's making me really excited too, because if the temperatures are anywhere near here, which I'm sure they'll be a lot, a little bit hotter mm -hmm. uh, when we go there for the playoffs, this is going to be a treat. I'm sure Goodyear's going to kind of go back to the drawing board with this tire, see what we need to figure out that's a little bit different. But overall, very enjoyable. Ben, where would you rate this above the yellow line? Remember, 50%, we have the line. You want, you want to be above it for a good race. And I, I figure we're above it, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I said earlier it was might be my race of the year, but Atlanta's still in my mind. Yeah, Atlanta's still in my mind. Man, I'd have to say at least 75. 75 for me. 75? Okay. I ooh, Okay, because I gave Phoenix a 60, and I was like, oh, for Phoenix. Atlanta, what did I give that? I gave it like a 99%. You gave it a banger. Certified hood classic. Ooh, man. Okay, I think I'm going to give this one a 90, 90, 88, 80, 89, okay. 89%. Actually, I, I may have redact mine. I, I have to go, I'd say 80, 85 to 89 in that, okay. in that window, in that range. Um, I felt like there was a little bit, like I felt like it was a solid race overall, but I felt mm -hmm. like some of the stuff kind of got tough to watch for moments on end. Yeah. But overall, very solid racing. Very fun racing at the end of the day. There was, was one fun. point, like it felt like pack racing because they were two by two by two by two by two, mm -hmm. like, tw like 12 rows deep. And it mm -hmm. was just, just like no one wanted to go. But it, it's one of those things of... You know, again, your racers adapt to the conditions that are given to you. You are given a tough condition, adapt. adapt. Like, I'd say 87, 89, somewhere in there. And I think for me, just on a personal note, and even for Ben too, there's so few races that we go to now where we're, where we're not working and where we're able to just kind of sit back and be a fan. And this for me was like the refresh I needed to start the season. It was just, it was so fun. And yes, I bought a Denny Hamlin hat because I just felt like I had to at this point, you guys, I'm sorry. I also like, this is like my favorite hat now at this point, love it. But no, absolutely incredible racing. 89% um, for me, well, basically an 89, 87, 87 89, 89 from yeah. Ben. Um, but that does it here from us at Bristol. Throughout the week, we'll be giving some more in-depth recaps. I'll be putting them on like my TikTok, Instagram, whatever. So make sure to follow me at underscore or Taylor Kitchen underscore on social media platforms and check out above the line.com to check out more content from us. And then of course we have our live stream. I believe this week it is on a Wednesday, but keep up on social media for that. We will have a special guest. Oh, no. So, and then Ben, your social media handles. Uh, you can find me at Ben Branscombe on Twitter. That's where I'm very active as well. Uh, come say hi, hang out, vibe. Yeah, come by with us. Oh, and of course, tobychristy.com, where you can find our combined content. Um, all have to shout out our time. boss. We, we have to shout out our boss, Toby Christy. Fantastic NASCAR content. Um, thank you to everyone who came up to us to say hey today. Um, really awesome to meet you all at the track. And just, it was, it's such, it was such a lovely time. So next race for me, I will be at Richmond. Hope to see you all there. Ben, your next race is the 600. Yep, I'll be at Charlotte. I'll be working the Arca race and also just kind of hanging out and doing some fun stuff. So...
So ATYL live from the track at that point then, I guess, too. <laughs> so, We're going to get more microphones. We really got we, a lot of people. <laughs> but everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Above the Yellow Line, live from Bristol Motor Speedway. From a parking lot. From a parking lot. Until next time, we'll see ya. Bye.